thanks. Okay. All right, thanks cheers. Thanks so much. Dream. You guys have a park right there. That's great. Nice. We're in Barcelona. We'll explain why we're here later. For the moment, we're gonna go around exploring and go see the Camp Nou, which is where Lionel Messi plays all the football. Honestly, I don't know who the fuck to trust. Is he my friend or my foe? I'm a f exit, bro. Yeah, she give me that claim as well. Bro. So you're here. How do you feel? Where's Messi at? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Oh, wait, he's there. Messi, Messi, oh, there he is. Messi, 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 Messi. He's doing all kinds of moves. Messi, 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 I'm doing a speech here in Barcelona. It's for a conference called Digital Child Mental Health 2020. My talk is on how technology can help mental health. I'm talking around my experience with YouTube and how videos have helped me build my confidence. Super excited to do this. It's the first time I've done a speech of this kind in front of academics. And Dara's here with me to help make oh, wow. the promo video of it, record the talk, and I'm probably gonna have a snippet of it in this vlog. Almost midnight now here in Barcelona, and we're gonna be up bright and early in the morning to go out to the, the conference, that's so exciting. And then we fly home to Ireland tomorrow night, so it's very, very quick. It's not really 40, it's like 30 something hours. It's like 39.6. We're sleeping for seven hours a night. And then we're getting back to bed. In Ireland. Because uh, Dublin. So Are you excited? Are you scared? I am a little bit nervous because like, like everybody else is going to be talking has done a lot of research whereas my stuff is all anecdotal just talking about my life I guess. But it's going to be great. I think you're going to do fine. Thanks Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Here. So we don't know where the f we are. Where the f is the entrance? We walk around the whole building and cannot find the door. That was, that was the door back there. Oh, you see it. You see it. There's there, the young book there to the right. This looks great. A lot bigger place than I thought. And uh, hopefully we'll get a few attendees. So it's 10 past 9 now. Registration still at half 9. First talk's at 10. And then I'll need to practice my speech somewhere. Later on, we're going to have a researcher speed dating session, uh, if you'll excuse the weird description. And we're going to tell you all about our individual projects. So we're going to invite you to interact with all of the team network across this room. So we have 30 minutes for coffee, and it's just outside. That's the first talk done. It's now 11 a.m. Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> this will be me later on. There's me. Look at me down there now. The young Thomas entrepreneur and a YouTuber. But first, pastries. So talk number two is going to happen now in a minute. I'm going to chill out here in this back room and practice. Mine's only a 30 minute slot. Everybody else has 60 minute slots. It seems quite scary just how for 30 minutes. Honestly, I don't know who the fuck to trust is my friend or my fault. I'm a exit, bro. Yeah, she give me that claim as well. It was sort of funny when Darren McCashin sent me an email saying he was organizing this conference and um, because when I thought of what people were going to talk about, I was like, they're academics. Like, why would I, what value could I bring to you know, a crowd of people who have done a lot more research than me, people who are a lot smarter than me. Um, but I guess when I thought of it more and more, um, and the thing that Dara brought to me was, I guess I'm giving a youth's perspective in that since the age of 12, I'm now, I know I still look 12, but I'm 22 now. Um, since the age of 12, I've been making content online. So I've not only been a consumer of social media and been managing my mental health, but I've also been a producer as well, someone who's actively try to build a following and I've learned a lot of lessons along the way and I think it would be interesting to just share my story with you guys and then delve into some fun stuff at the end like how to make a viral video. Doesn't that sound cool? I can hear oohs in the audience already. Um, yeah, so let's, let's begin, which is going to be about, oh boom, there's me, look at that. I'm 12 there, don't I look great? I haven't really changed at all, have I? Um, but I guess 
to start from the start, this is around 2011. Um, I was on a holiday with my parents and my dad had this handy cam which he was filming my sisters with. We're in the south of France. And there was this viral video at the time which was a, a meme of Justin Bieber. So um, I was like, oh, it'd be hilarious if I recreated this meme. So I went into my room, got my sister to hold the camera, created this little video, came home from my holidays, edited it on my laptop, and I was like, this is gonna be my first YouTube video. I was all chuffed at myself, thought it was great. Brought it to my dad. Absolutely cannot post that, Thomas. That is very, very embarrassing. So uh, obviously I was, I was devastated. But at the time, I was playing cricket quite heavily. And he said, if you make something more educational, I'll allow you to post that because I can see how that can be valuable to, uh, to other people. So I was like, this is perfect. At the time, and I guess this is something I'll come back to later, I didn't really know why I wanted to post. And my mom kept saying to me, why do you want to post? I was posting like every two weeks. And I actually didn't really understand why, but I, all I knew was I really wanted to do it. So what I used to do was I'd go onto Google, I'd type in search terms for cricket, how to bat, how to field, how to bowl. Um, I'd literally rip the information off Wikipedia because I'm 12 and I know nothing about cricket. And I'd put it into a script, edit it on my laptop and then post, post a video. And this is what I did basically from the age of 12 to 14. And the channel got, it got 246,000 views. I took this last night um, over the course of like a year and a half. It was mainly because there was nobody making tutorials when it came to cricket. Um, and it was sort of like a niche that was underserved. Of those 246,000 views, 130,000 <coughs> of them were from India. So um, it's, I guess, the beauty of the internet. You have no idea sometimes where your fan base can come from. There was so many kids in India who were just they're, they're really just getting access to internet now, but they were just getting access to internet and they genuinely thought I was some guru of cricket when I was 12. I used to get messages, back then YouTube, you could get like direct messages and I'd get really long comments about how the videos had changed their lives in very broken English, so I didn't really understand what they were saying. Um, but this was sort of my first, first foray into it. Is this another thing come up? Oh yeah, so I guess after this, uh, I was 14 now, so everybody remembers when they were 14. It's a very awkward age. Social pressures on you. You're going to discos. You're trying to get with girls and stuff. And I was in an all-boys school, and I was getting a lot of pushback from the videos, people saying stuff behind my back, and I was starting to second-guess myself. So over the course of like 14 to 18, when I was finishing off high school, I sort of went away from videos and I was trying to figure out what were the things that I enjoyed. So that was a, an exchange video I made when I was 16, um, five years ago, what age was I then? 17, this is fifth year. Um, I was making the odd video, but I didn't, really know, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. So I was just like, look, I'm gonna go back to schoolwork, which is what I was good at. and. Um, I was, trying to, I was trying to figure out what I'd be best at because ever since the age of like 12, I've always wanted to be the best at stuff. Um, and I decided when I was 18 that that would be sign, a scientist. That's just a photo I got off Getty Images. Um, but uh, I decided I wanted to do science. So I studied really hard for my leaving cert, which is like the, the baccalaureate if you're in Europe. And um, I was going to go to Trinity College. That was, that was my goal. So. I'm there on results day. So in Ireland, what happens is you study for this big exam and in summer, so you, you're doing your exams in June and then in August, everybody logs onto this website called cao.ie and uh, you can see your results at 6 a.m. that morning. So I'm there coming out of my bed. I'm like, freaking nailed this. You, you rank your universities on a scale of like one to 10. So I was trying to get my, my number one university. So I go into the room, whack in my details, I'm there so confident. And then I open up the results and my mom comes into the room and she's wearing her dressing gown. And um, she's like, how'd you do, how'd you do? And uh, I got my fifth preference, which basically when I was filling out the form, I never thought I would get my fifth preference. I, I was easily hitting my first preference. And I was like, oh my God, mom, I'm, I'm going to DCU and I'm not doing the course I wanted to do. And she immediately started to cry. <laughs> she was like, oh God, this is terrible, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I guess at that point, I thought I was fine. I would just go to DCU and see how things went. But I ended up going, ended up going to DCU and I hated the course. 
And I guess I realized at that point when I was 18 that you obviously change over time. And although you might set a goal for yourself and you really want to go for something, as you're evolving, your interests change. And so I ended up dropping out of uh, science Christmas after I went into my first university and I started uh, doing doors or knocking knocking door to door to sell alarms it was my first job I was just trying to get my head straight get a bit of money in the door and um, and this was the sheet I used to fill out every day so you'd basically get an estate around Dublin and I'd have to th this was the metrics right 100 houses, this is what the manager told me, which I, I never fulfilled this criteria. 100 houses, 24 answers, 25 answers, five people you do a pitch to, one person you get a sale with. Um, that didn't really work out for me that often. Um, but this is what I did for four or five months. I started to actually get quite fat. Um, I think you can see there with that, my face, it looks quite chubby. Because over time, I was, um, I was getting more and more like frustrated. My parents were like, what are you doing? Because it was completely commission based. So I'd only get money if I made a sale. And I was working from 3 p.m. till midnight every day. And I'd come home late and my mom would be like, what are you doing? Are you going back to college? Uh, I used to eat donuts in my old university before going to work because I was just so, I was just so sad and I didn't really know where, where I was at, I guess. And I had to ask myself, existential crisis at 18, what made me happy? And uh, I remembered one of the things that made me really happy was when I was 14 and I was making videos. Um, so this was around March, April 2016. I said, I'm going to start making YouTube videos again. And I don't really care how they come out. I don't care what people think. I'm 18 now. I'm in a new university. My secondary school past is behind me. And I'm just going to start posting one vlog a week. That was the goal, one vlog a week. So there's me when I was 18 in Amsterdam uh, vlogging. So, so that's what I started to do. Um, I might just go back to this. I basically started to vlog. So I reapplied for the CAO to do business. Uh, I went into UCD, which is the place I've been now for three to four years. And uh, I started doing vlogs three times a week. So in my first year in college, I made 100 videos. I was just making videos, making videos, making videos, making videos. I was a new Thomas. I wasn't the previous Thomas. And I started building a set of skills unbeknownst to myself that, that I didn't really realize. So like video completely changed my life. And it's, there was, I guess if I was to distill it down into three things, it, it was these, these, these three things. Uh, so number one, it gave me self-confidence. So vlogging as a medium is one where you, you, like, you talk to your camera directly. And over time, it just gave me a lot of self-confidence. And I guess how I view self-confidence is your ability to make decisions when the pressure is on. And I guess vlogging was, for me, was performing in stressful situations on a consistent basis. And that made me a much better performer. The second thing was self-expression. So anytime I had like, issues mentally or I, I needed to just get something out, it's hard sometimes to speak to friends and family, because like I love my mom and my dad, but my mom and my dad don't understand a lot of the stuff that I'd be going through. And speaking to a camera was like an outlet where it would never talk back to you. It would only listen. And um, it, it gave me a great way to get my thoughts uh, sort of out into the world. And I found that when I shared them on the internet, the, the magnitude or sort of the, the emotional weight it had on me completely dissolved. And that was something that sharing content online really allowed me to have. And then the last thing was self-discipline. So at this point in time, I've posted over 200 videos in college. Um, it's been going on for probably the past four years. There's been many times where videos didn't get a lot of views. There's been many times where I didn't really know why I was doing it. There was points at which motivation was really lacking. But um, I always set a goal for myself that I would, I would post a certain amount of times a week. And that sort of translated into many different areas in my life. It translated into fitness. It translated into academics. It, it gave me a whole plethora of skills, which I never would have known if we were to look back when I was 14, first started making cricket videos. I never would have understood the, the stuff it, it sort of would have given me. So with all the good sides, there's obviously downsides. And um, these were three that I find quite prevalent, definitely amongst the student community. And also, in terms of my audience, it's quite young people. So it would be anybody between the age of like 
12 to 16. So if you can imagine, if I'm vlogging in college and you're someone who hasn't been to college yet, I come across as someone who's like, who knows all the stuff and is like a bit, a bit of a guru. So they would sort of be my audience. The first one would be, this is actually a screenshot from like a few months ago. Um, the first one would be insecurity around numbers. So this is like some YouTube stats, but this can relate to Instagram when you don't get many likes or when you put up a post and it doesn't get the engagement that you thought it would get. Um, for me as a YouTuber, when I post a video and it doesn't get a lot of views, it affects me no matter what anybody says. You know, people might say, I'd still be posting videos if nobody watched. I don't think that's true. I think if in the YouTube game anyway, you're constantly trying to get more views, you want more attention on you. And when a video does really well and you get a lot of views, I feel great. And when it doesn't go so well and views are down, I'm questioning what went wrong, what could I do better, how do I get more clicks next time. I spend so much time with Dara figuring out all these questions. Um, so that's one downside to it. I know this is a bit uh, bad, sorry, but this is, a, this is a comment that was put on my YouTube channel. A hateful comments, they, they happen all the time. Um, Ironically, I had to go through so many different comments to find a bad one, um, but they are there. And unfortunately, you know, even though there might be 50 positive comments, it's the hateful comment that is the one that you tend to hold on to for some reason. It's the one that you, you, it's, it starts to get in your head. And I think that's obviously a downside to social media. My viewpoint on it though would be that if you're putting yourself out there, uh, you have to be willing to accept that that's just a part of the game that you're playing. If you don't want hateful comments, then you don't need to post anything because nobody's going to say anything about you. Uh, and then the last thing is uh, attention span. So this is a, a goldfish. A goldfish has an attention span of about nine seconds. And I think, I haven't done the proper research into this, but Google told me last night that current hum human attention span is around six seconds. Um, social media in general, has, I think, really reduced our uh, ability to be engaged with stuff for long periods of time. Now with the advent of TikTok, I'm sure you've all seen TikTok, it's, it's like almost YouTube on steroids, how quickly you can flick through videos at, and barely even watch them. We're so used to just flicking culture. So I think that definitely plays a role in, in mental health as well. And I think it'll be interesting to see how my generation grows up, how they're able to cope with difficult tasks when they're in adulthood or in their professions, are they able to actually work through, are they able to work through difficult tasks or do they just say it's, it's too hard and they give up? Um, so, bonus. Um, I'm gonna be more interactive now, I've been talking way too long. So, um, I've had one viral video. Now, Dara would say to me, this isn't a viral video. Not this Dara, this, my friend Dara here. He would say that this is not a viral video, this is a high performing video. Um, I think we'd view viral as something which has over a million views. But this is the best performing video I've had on my channel and it's, it was the quickest to, to grow. So in 2018, uh, th there was no Krispy Kreme franchise in, in Ireland at all. It had never been in Ireland. We'd never seen a Krispy Kreme donut in our entire lives. And one came to this uh, town called Blanchardstown, which is sort of like, <coughs> it's in Dublin, but it's sort of like a shopping type area. So they set up uh, this Krispy Kreme, which you can, you can see on the right hand side, and it was open 24 hours and it was an absolute frenzy when it opened. So the opening day, there was cars parked almost a kilometer long to get to this Krispy Kreme. So basically my friend put up on his Instagram story that there was crazy, he lives in Lancaster Saint, he saw that there was crazy lines of people going to this place, right? So <coughs> I got two of my friends and we went straight to it. And I was like, I'm just gonna make a little taste test video of, of Krispy Kreme. It was all over the tabloid newspapers. It was just very mainstream in Ireland. It was on the radio, it was everywhere. So this was Saturday. I filmed it that day and I posted it on Sunday. So it sort of goes back to what you're saying. I guess it was culturally relevant at the time. And in terms of YouTube, when you're getting, if you wanna get a lot of views, the a bit like when you're opening a book, the, the front cover is very important. So on YouTube, the front cover is your title and thumbnail. So here, I guess the reason why I think the title and thumbnail went well is because the keywords are good in terms of the title. So Krispy Kreme, Ireland, that was what everybody was Googling at the time. And it sort of answers the question, is it worth the hype? Is it, are the donuts any good or are people actually crazy? So it got like 50,000 views in a week. 
And the, the second reason why it did really well was because like a week later, two or a group of lads tried to break in at 11 p.m. and steal a load of donuts. And they had to stop it being 24 hours. And it was open now from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. So it got way more mainstream coverage. And my video shot to the top of results on Google for videos. So it got another like 40,000 views. <coughs> and then the last reason why, and I think someone brought it up there, uh, two weeks in, the comments changed from Irish to, um, to American. So if you can see the top right there, everybody in America who had a Krispy Kreme franchise near them, and these were all like older people, they, they started commenting on the video. So YouTube had obviously plucked it out of Ireland because they had seen it had done really well and thrown it into America for anybody who had seen Krispy Kreme videos before. And that's why it sort of continued to grow. So it's sort of stalled now. It's been over a year. Myself and Dara, the, a viral video for a YouTuber is like the, it's like gold in El Dorado. It's, it's the thing you'd always want. It's like with an academic potentially that you get published in a, a peer reviewed journal. It is the creme de la creme because it can grow your channel, get more eyeballs on you. Um, Dara and I have made several attempts, like all the time to try and make stuff go viral. It, it's very hard and there's always variables which you cannot control. Um, but that's, I guess, my experience of how that one did really well. Um, yes, yeah, so that's my, my email. If anybody has any questions about vlogging or anything, far away. That was my uh, first speaking gig. It was fun. There was a few people here. It was like 25 people, 30 people. Hundreds. Hundreds. There was millions. 2,500. There was millions. I was definitely a bit nervous beforehand, but once you got into the flow of it, stuff came pretty easy. Man, you came off very natural, like straight away. It was good. Really? Yeah, yeah. Good. Like funny and energetic. That's not usually you. <laughs> I definitely, I really enjoy public speaking. I definitely think I'm good at it and I can get better. So I would enjoy doing more of these in the future. And I can definitely add a lot of value when it comes to, there's definitely a gap between kids and adults when it comes to technology. And I can give a perspective of a child and also give the new the insight that an adult could have on technology. But yeah, it was any, anyway, it was fun. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you next week. We're going off to a shopping mall. What are you going to buy? Uh, underwear. Big. Huge, huge big ding dong. Oh my god, I hit up the head. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't know who the fuck to trust. Is he my friend or my fault? I'm a ex. Do you like waffle? I like a waffle. Do you like the waffle right now? Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's get the waffle.